man that, i'm gonna have to cut that off the end of that you know what i mean you're, <laughs> it's getting you're, old yeah it's getting old and you feel like you gotta <laughs> say something you know you, you gotta done. do is put a, lo- a woman screaming <laughs> yeah well <laughs> well, all you had to be is it was at your gig last night <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> well let's say in studio with us right now is Minnie Diaz she is an advocate for everybody but I, right now we're going to talk to her about musicians Minnie good to see you thank you for having me here and uh, I, I'm very happy to be here oh great well we're happy to have you here and and what I want to know is just tell tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you grew up, and how you came to be what you're doing now. Well, uh, I I am if if one were to describe oneself as a tapestry, I have many colors in my tapestry. I am a native of San Jose, California, and was uh, raised in New York until about ten years old. From there, I went to Puerto Rico. And then in 1985, I received a commission in the United States Air Force as a second lieutenant. And my first assignment was in New Hampshire, Peace Air Force Base, New Hampshire. From So I've traveled from New Hampshire to North Carolina, to Washington, D.C., California, Florida, and Peterson. Uh, I mean, Colorado and uh, quite wow. a bit. So uh, what did you do in the Air Force? I had three assignments. Uh, my first assignment was a federal law enforcement officer with the Office of Special Investigations. The second was command and control, manning the, um, the command center for... Uh, Back then, the Strategic Air Command, would, they had bombers on alert and the oh, alert yeah. force, and also as a chaplain. So I'm an ordained minister as well. Oh, wow. Well, I'll get no more talk about the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been very interesting to hear about the dollhouse and the other place you didn't mention. Well, uh, I'll, I'll try, we'll try <laughs> Are you well, gonna Are you gonna save him, Minnie? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, you know, everybody <laughs> sure. knows that I do sound for Feather Sound Church, and that's right. what I've been up <laughs> since six o'clock this morning doing sound for Feather Sound Church. Yeah. So. He's a change man. He's uh, a change. Yeah, well, I'm changed. We're at, least on, about, at least on Sundays. Well, we're yeah. talking about the past now. That's a long time. Oh ago. yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was back in my heathen days, you know. But anyway, it's great for you to be here. And um, how long were you in the Air Force? 13 years total um, in between active duty and reserves. And what, uh, when you got out, what rank were you? Captain. Wow. How that's about good. that? That's, that's pretty cool. So from one captain to another. How about <laughs> that, you know? Captain Hook to Captain Minnie. That's right. <laughs> captain Hook to Captain Boy, there's a cartoon characters going on. Well, <laughs> <What's going on? laughs> that's just normal for born a musician, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. The creative side comes out. That's right. Captain that's right. Hook, Captain Minnie, and the Angry Rocker. <laughs> that's right. Hey, it's like, you know, the dynamic trio. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, so we got you here today because I know you've got a couple of issues that are very important to you. Also, you ran for Congress, didn't you? State representative. State representative, okay. And so you, you have your... Uh, political background too you're it sounds like you're very busy i am very busy i like to uh, remain engaged in life there is so much to know and to do in life that there's no time to, for idleness in my life mm-hmm. uh, that's just uh, ever ready bunny has nothing on me i i love to go yeah and uh what what, uh, what i want to know is now um as being a, a you you uh, described yourself earlier as as, as as some sort of a community activist. Now, we have heard that phraseology before, and I'm not going to get political or anything here. But I know sure. you're you are part of the Republican Party, and you call yourself a community activist. That's right. right. I I like to see myself as the Republican. Um, community activists with a heart. Um, there's a lot of stereotypes out there that Republicans don't care, but we do care, is that we need to find a viable venue where we can uh, put forth the uh, social concerns that are latent within the communities but have not yet found an expressive or legislative form to get it out. Yeah, or basically a voice of for the people. Exactly. Right. And that is my motto. That was the motto of the campaign, A Voice for All People, which now I have adopted into my business, Divine Conservative LLC. Okay. So explain to me now 
uh, how this would all fit in in the music world. Well, Divine Conservatives' mission is to represent those who are underrepresented. And the musicians in Florida lack a cohesive voice, lack uh, representation. There are no guilds here, per se. There are no associations. There are no unions mm -hmm. where um, all the artists and musicians can come together and say, well, here is a... Uh, here is a cohesive and legislative piece where we can come to the Florida legislation and say, back us up. Florida, uh, it's great on tourism and it's great on many other things, but we have somehow have not endorsed or backed the arts. And therefore, the arts in Florida are like second uh, second citizen, if, if you wish. Well, you know what? That's one thing that's very close to my heart is because uh, how I got into music was, of course, I love music, especially growing up, and then the Beatles came out in 64, and I wanted to play drums and all that sort of stuff. But this isn't about me. But my, one of my passions is they, they've taken away music out of schools. I mean, uh, when I went to school, I played drums in the marching band and uh, did that. Now, you, d you don't see very much of that in public schools anymore. Correct. And the reason it has to do with funding. Right. And, um, well, that's the first thing to get cut when they start whacking, you know, when the teachers, you know, uh, unions get involved and they want to, you know, pay raise and all this stuff. Well, to pay them, they're going to cut programs. And this is, this is where we need to be as a community. We need to understand that the world in the 21st century is moving towards healing, not only um, providing jobs for everyone, but all, also finding a place for everyone to include musicians and artists. Uh, musicians and artists for the longest have been the prophets of the of the times and uh, I would like to see a community that uh, rewards not only rewards with with awards uh, uh, the the local artists and musicians, but with tangible financial means, uh, the artists and musicians have financial needs like everyone else. We have mortgages to pay, and uh, bills to pay, and we need we need that backing from the government in the sense of legislation for the ability to for us to be rewarded in our talents, so that we can uh, continue to move forward with whatever creative talents are innate in each and one of the artists. Right, right. And the, and the least that they could do is put back funding for the arts. You know, even, right. f you know, for artists or for, uh, you know, painters or for in any of the arts in school, whether it be musicians or whatever. Go ahead. You know, I'd like to say something about that because uh, a lot of uh, people will listen to what she just said or things that we have talked about in the past, and they'll probably say, like, well, there's schools like Blake High School or Tarpon Springs High School that support the arts, but it's not funded by the government. It's no. people that put private donations. Right. And actually, just recently, I found out almost about a year ago that Blake High School is in, you know, is in trouble financially. Right. And if people don't put up money, there won't be any program anymore. Well, that's the problem with grants. You have a grant for one year or two if you're a successful grant writer. And then next year, another organization comes along and they get the grant money. Right. So that completely destabilizes the source of the provider and the ones who receive the, right. the grants. Right. There's no consistency there. And so if you've got a little brother or something that's coming up through school or even yourself and you're in a four-year school that... Uh, uh, you know, there's no guarantee that that money is going to be there to continue your education on learning how to play an instrument or anything else. And therefore, it is short-lived and sabotage and disappointment comes and it, it brings other out of that disappointment, our youth will go somewhere else where they can feel good about that loss. And unfortunately, it's not always g good places they go. Right. Yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to say something about, too, to yeah. interject that, and I'm not going to mention any school in particular, but it's really happening nationwide, is you have these schools that promote, you know, teaching you the arts, like recording, you know, doing mm -hmm. uh, stuff that's involved with arts, and the prices they charge are amazing, and there's no jobs out for this stuff. Right. So, you know, uh, this really hurts the parents because, like, say, for example... Uh, you know some schools, and I won't mention any of the ones because I'm not trying to attack them. I'm sure maybe maybe saying what we're saying might help change this, right? But seventy thousand dollars a year to do audio, and then all of a sudden get out of school, and then I've heard right. I've I've been you know I work with students and I work with a lot of I mentor a lot of uh, people, and one of the things they they complain about is that they feel like they can never pay off these bills. Right. You know that 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 student loan it's like forever. 
Right. And um, and they're doing penalties. If they miss one month, all of a sudden they get a five hundred dollars surcharge. And it's like, well, wait a minute now. Well, you, you can know. you can blame the government for uh, jacking up the prices of all this stuff because the government you know, will loan you the money to uh, go, and that's why right. they just keep raising the prices, and that's why the college costs are crazy right. amount now. Not not everybody was meant to go to college, you know right. what I mean? But it's uh, well, one of the things they don't they don't tell you is is that you know if you're going to be in music, you, you got to be an entrepreneur yeah. because you, you you know there's not going you're not going to knock on somebody's door and say. I, you got a job for you know to do you know to like be an engineer in a studio. That's <laughs> good luck, you know, yeah, unless you have some amazing talent that they just see and that you're bringing business to their studio. But that's not going to happen. Well, the problem that I see is that a lot of these laws that fund education are punitive. You miss, like you just said, you miss a payment, you're going to get charged for missing a payment, and not only that's going to hurt your history, your credit history, and then it it they don't allow for humanity right things happen right life happens right it's, shit happens it's, it's, it's so not ri- it's, it's, it's gonna it's <laughs> right know, i'm just being very 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 honest well, i'm just true. gonna be and, honest and there's um and, and these loans are not regulated like there are there are loans for anything else because uh they don't come up they don't fall under the bankruptcy court these loans stick with you forever they get mm-hmm. resold and then the, the interest rate doubles on them. I can tell you a quick story. I had a friend of mine in 1973 borrowed $40,000 to do four years of, of college. It, right now, uh, he now, because of through the course of his life, he'd, he'd lose a job or whatever and miss a payment. And then the, more, the uh, loan would get sold over again. And what would happen, well, he owes 450000 now on a $40,000 loan he took in 1974. Well, I would like to That's be crazy. that. I would like mm-hmm. to be that person who represents this person who, j- who you just described. Right. Uh, it, it is. No, um, it's, it's nationwide. It's all over the place. Like well, it mm-hmm. then we need to unite, and further reasons for us to unite because it's, it's not only ethically and morally wrong; it's even financially wrong. It's like putting these huge taxes on all these countries all over the world that can't pay their national debt. Right, I mean, and one of the proposals from the Obama administration was after 10 years, your loans would be forgiven if you entered in some sort of service, whether it be in the military, whether it be working for a <laughs> local uh, 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 government as a county worker or whatever. If you paid back in some sort of service, your loans after 10 years would be forgiven. That has never come to fruition. That was a big bunch of hooey. I don't understand how that has anything to do with anything anyway. Well, we're talking about loans and music, and then, you know. No, no, that's but no, but I, I don't mean what you said. Mm-hmm. I mean what you just said. What they were doing. I mean, so you got to be a slave to something, yeah, just so you well, can get t- rid of this. You know, I mean that's kind of crazy. Well, it's 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 pretty much a, 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 the lobbyists have gotten in there and re- they've regulated out these uh, c- private companies that, and the government backs these private companies with guarantees to make sure that uh, they get paid. And, uh, but but, um, but that it's a separate set of, uh, it's not, it doesn't operate the same loan as you'd go to a bank and get. Right. I am that counterculture lobbyist because right. that's what divine conservatism is. It's a lobbying business. But I want to uptake the cost, like I said before, of the underrepresented, the mm-hmm. social justice issues, mm-hmm. like the mentally ill in jail. Um, where I live in Pasco County, t- up to 20% of the jail population are considered mentally ill. And each time no, we try no, to do something about Talk about Reggie like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it is not the way. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Right. Well, <laughs> in you jail, we have musicians and artists right. because uh, there is this uh, core relationship between um, the uh, the creative gene and mental illness. And we have, you know, history is written with uh, the painters and artists and musicians and all kinds of um, theater performers performers who have a condition of mental illness and so it's correlated so our jails not only are full with veterans and pe- people with mental illness right. and, it, but up to 20 percent can you imagine of all of six persons here 20 percent that means at least one or two of us will end, be in jail because we have a condition. Can you believe that? So <laughs> hand raised. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 it's not just a a a a uh, a moral issue. It's an ethical issue. It's an economic issue in the community. And like I said before, the 21st uh, century youth is not 
going to put up with this kinds of injustice. There's a strong sense of justice among the people. Yeah, and, and, and the other thing is, if, if they brought back music in all the public schools, can you imagine? It, it gives the kids something to do after school. It gives them an interest instead of going out it selling... It makes them more intelligent. Instead of selling dope on the street or right. getting in trouble or burglarizing or mugging well, some old lady. or you Yeah, know. it makes them more intelligent. I mean, yeah. that's proven already. They've done this study well, over and over in the last 30 years. They did it every, every 10 years they've done it, and they've proven it. It makes them more intelligent. All right. Well, we're going to come up here on a commercial break, and we're going to come back with Minnie Diaz. You're listening to Born a Musician on WDBFradio.com. 